let's not waste time on our last lesson. We're going to be solving equations with radicals. Um, this is exciting for me, but I don't know. Um, radical equation is an equation that has a variable in the radicand. The radicand is this thingy. It's the thing underneath the radical. In order to solve, you have to get the radical by itself, isolate it, and that is an important first step that we'll see. Then we're going to square both sides of the equation. Whenever you're squaring both sides of an equation, you need to watch out for what we call extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions means that sometimes we're going to end up with solutions that don't work. So this is one case where the checking your solutions is part of the problem. Um, it's not something extra at the end, but it's actually part of the solving part. So if we look at number one, uh, we have a new operation that we can do to both sides, um, and that's squaring both sides. We haven't done that before. Um, so if I take the left side and I square it, I'm going to get 4n. The square of 4n square rooted is just 4n. If I take the right side and square, squ square it, I get 1 third times 1 third, which is 1 ninth. Now and only now can we do an LCD of 9. I have an equal sign. Some of you guys messed this up on the test I was just grading, where if you don't have an equal sign, you can't multiply by at least common denominator. But if you do have an equal sign, you can multiply the left side and the right side by the same number, using what we call the multiplication property of equality to do that. Um, so I have 36n is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 36, and you get n is equal to 1 36 then as part of the check if I plug 136 then 4 times 136 is 436 or 1 ninth and the square root of 1 ninth is 1 third and 1 third is equal to 1 third so that checks and we're going to go ahead and put 1 third or 136 into set notation as our final solution <coughs> for number two we have to isolate the radical it's not isolated right now, so I need to add 2 to both sides to get 9 is equal to the square root of z. And then we're going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. 9 squared is 81. Square root of z squared is z. I get z is equal to 81. As part of the check, we're going to say 7 is equal to the square root of 81 minus 2, or 7 is equal to 9 minus 2, and that does check. So 81 gets promoted to set notation as our final solution. For number 3, m plus 5 is equal to 1. It's already isolated, so I can go ahead and square both sides. The left side, I would just get m plus 5, and the right side, I get 1. And if we subtract 5, we get m is equal to negative 4. Check. Negative 4 plus 5. Square rooted. Does that equal 1? Well, that's the square root of 1 equals 1, and that is true. So negative 4 gets put in set notation, and we're done. Number four, <clears throat> if I look at the radical part, it is isolated. This, we don't care. Uh, we don't care what's going on, on the other side as long as the radical is by as long as the variable part is by itself. So I'm going to square both sides again. Square root of r squared is r. Five squared, and then I have radical two squared. R is equal to twenty-five times two, or r is equal to fifty. Check square root of 50 is equal to the square root of 25 times 2, which is 5 radical 2, and that actually equals 5 radical 2, so that's a check. So our solution of 50 is going to go in set notation. <coughs> Number 5, uh, we need to isolate the radical parts. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. I get 2 is equal to radical 7x over 3. Um, then if I multiply both the left and the right sides by a 3, I get 6 is equal to radical 7x. Now we're going to square both sides. Left side becomes 36, the right side becomes 7x. Divide both sides by 7, you get 36 over 7. Check. Square root of 7 times 36 over 7 over 3 plus 2. 7's cancel, and the square root of 36 is 6, so then I have 6 over 3 plus 2. 6 over 3 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4 is equal to 4, so that checks. So 36 sevenths is a solution. We'll put it in set notation. Number 5. 
Um, I could divide by 6, um, or I could just square both sides now. It doesn't matter. We're going to have to divide by 10 eventually. So let's just get this radical by itself. Let's divide by the 6. 5 radical 10 over 6 is equal to m, uh, radical m. And then if we square both sides, that radical m can look better. Uh, I get 25 times square root of 10 is squared is 10, and then 6 squared is 36 equals m. Now, before I start multiplying, I could cancel. The 10 and the 36 can become 5 and 6. 5 times 1, or 25 is 125, and then over 6. So now I've got to check that. Um, if I do, let's check, let's do 6 radical 125 over 6. Um, that would be the same thing as 6 radical 125 over radical 6. If I multiply by radical 6 over radical 6, I would get, let's see, this would be 6 radical 125 times 6 over 6. 6 is cancel. Radical 125 is 25 times 5, and I still have the times 6. Um, and if I bring the 5 out, I get 5 radical 30. So that doesn't match. Um, something's not right here. Let's check and see what it is. It's right here. This should have been an 18, uh, making this 125 over 18. So if I have 125 over 18, um, that's going to change all this. Oh, you guys are going to have to erase. Let's simplify each part first now. Let's bring out the 25. 5 times 3 is 30. Radical 5. Bring out the 9. Get 3 radical 2. Multiply by radical 2 over radical 2. <coughs> get 30 radical 10 over. This would be 12. Um, or sorry, that wouldn't be 12. That would be 6. And that's equal to 5 radical 10, which is equal to this thing over there. So, get okay, 125 over 18 does check. Square both sides. 2m squared minus 10 is equal to 16. 2m squared is equal to 26. m squared is equal to 13. And let's introduce the radical, uh, plus or minus. So m is equal to plus or minus the square root of 13. If I plug both of those back into the left side as a check, I get 2 times 13 minus 10, which is square root of 16, or 4. So they check, and plus or minus 13 is my solution. <coughs> Number 8. Uh, if we square both sides here, on the left side and the right side, left side we get x squared plus 9, right side we're going to have to FOIL because we have a binomial that we're squaring. So I have x squared plus 9 equals, first outer and our last, we have 9 minus 6x plus x squared. My x squareds are going to drop out, the 9s are going to drop out, I have 0 is equal to negative 6x, which if I divide by negative 6, I just get 0 is equal to x. Um, plug 0 back in as a check. If I plug it back in as a check, I get square root of 0 plus 9 equals 3 minus 0, and that does check. So 0 is the solution. Skip it over. 6 more. 6 more. Uh, if we square both sides of number 9, we get 13b squared plus 33 is equal to 16b squared. Um, subtract 13b squared, and I get 33 is equal to 3b squared. Divide both sides by 3, and I get 11 is equal to b squared. And that means b is equal to the plus or minus square root of 11. Now, as a check, um, I can see that on the left side it's not going to matter. I'm going to have 13 times 11 plus 33. Uh, 13 times 11 is 143. 143 plus 33 is 169. And the square root of 69 is 13. On the right side, when I take the negative 1 and I plug it in, I would get 
well. Sorry, this is the square root of 176. Uh, 176 is, let's see how we can break that up. That is equal to um, 16 times 11. So I can break up in the square root of 16 times 11, so that is 4 radical 11. But still, same point, on the right side, if I were to take the negative um, root 11 and plug it in, I would get 4 times negative root 11, and that can't be equal to 4 radical 11. Only the positive one can. So only the positive one's going to get promoted to set notation. And this is the proper way to do it. We check both, and we might reject one. We rejected the negative one. <coughs> Here, if I square both sides, get a squared plus 3a is equal to 4. a squared plus 3a, we're, we're going to set it equal to 0. Minus 4 is equal to 0. Factor a plus 4, a minus 1, and I get a is equal to negative 4, and a is equal to 1. Now here we're going to want to check both of these, so let's do a check. Square root of negative 4 squared is 16 minus 12, does that equal 2? Uh, yes. Check the 1, we have 1 squared plus 3 equals 2. So the square root of 4 is equal to 2, so that checks, so both of them work. Negative 4 and 1 are both solutions to that equation. Number 11. Uh, we might want to simplify this before we start. I have 3 radical a plus 7 is equal to 4 radical a. And if I subtract 3 radical a from both sides, I get 7 is equal to radical a. Then if I square both sides, 49 is equal to a. Check. 3 radical 49 plus 7. That is um, 3 times 7, 21 plus 7, or 28. On the right side, I would have uh, 16, sorry, the square root of 16 times 49 which is 4 times 7, or 28. That's 21 plus 7. So that's a check, and this works. And let's move on. 12 is different. Um, this one, we're going to kind of use a different strategy here. Uh, let's try to get this thing by itself as much as we can. So we're going to subtract r from both sides. And I've got negative 2 radical 5 minus 2r is equal to 4 minus r. Um, I'm going to multiply through by negative 1 and switch all the signs. So let's do left side by negative 1 and right side by negative 1. So I've got 2 radical 5 minus 2r is equal to r minus 4. Now we're going to square both sides. I know I didn't quite isolate the radical, but it's okay here. The left side, I'm going to end up with 4 times 5 minus 2r. And the right side, I'm going to have to foil that, r squared minus 8r plus 16. Distribute. 20 is e oh, sorry, 20 minus 16r equals r squared minus 8r plus 16. Let's set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 20 and add 16r. 0 is equal to r squared plus 8r minus 4. <coughs> of course, apparently I can't do math. This would be an 8r. So when I add, uh, I just get this middle terms out. Okay, this is easier. r squared minus 4. Factor r minus 2 r plus 2. This tells us that r is equal to plus or minus 2, so we want to check both of these. Plugging back in up here, I get, let's check the positive one. We'll check 2. 2 minus 2 times 5 minus 4, does that equal 4? This would be 2 minus 2 equals 4, or 0 is equal to 4. So that doesn't work. Let's check negative 2. 
got negative 2 minus 2 times 5 minus 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 minus, this would be minus 2 times, let's see, 5, this, this would be 3. Oops. Let's, let's make this radical 9. And then I have 2 minus 6, negative 8. Negative 8 does not equal 4 either. So neither of them work, and our solution is no solution, because our checks failed. Number 13. Let's get the radical term by itself. Remember, this is isolate radical. That radical d minus 2 is equal to d minus 4. Square both sides. d minus 2 is equal to d squared minus 8d plus 16. Um, set it equal to 0, so d squared is to be minus 9d and then plus 2, so plus 18. Um, <coughs> d minus 6 and d minus 3 is how it factors. You get d is equal to 6 or d is equal to 3. Now we need to check. Let's check the 6. 4 plus radical 4. And does that equal 6? Well, this is 4 plus 2 equals 6, so that works. Let's check the 3. 4 plus, this would be radical 1 equals 3, or 4 plus 1 equals 3. No, that doesn't work. So 3 is out, and 6 is our only solution. Last one. Um, this is in one with another radical. We have one radical isolated, and I know they are not like terms, so they can't add, so we're going to square both sides left side is going to be x minus 12. The right side I'm going to write is 6 minus radical x times 6 minus radical x because I can't distribute an exponent across plus or minus signs. That's the same thing as killing puppies. So what we're going to do is instead FOIL first 36 outer and inner would be minus 6 radical x minus 6 radical x or minus 12 radical x and last is plus x. Okay. Now we're going to sort of move everything over and isolate the radical again. So my x's are going to drop out. Subtract 36 from both sides. I get negative 48 is equal to negative 12 radical x. Uh, divide by negative 12. And you get 4 is equal to radical x. Square both sides again. And I get 16 is equal to x. If I plug it back in to check, you get radical 16 minus 12 and does that equal 6 minus radical 16? Well, 6 minus 12 is 4, square root of 4 is 2 equals 6 minus 4, so that does check and 16 is a solution. And we are done for the school year.